Hello. Hello, people. Hello, Brett. Labor <laughs> Did you have a nice long weekend? Had a nice long week in what? Colorado. I saw you went to uh you got to see Red Rocks. I did, but uh Nine Inch Nails was there, but we didn't have tickets. So we just oh. went for lunch and like got to hear them uh tune their instruments a little bit, but I definitely got to get back there for a show sometime. You couldn't like find tickets somehow? You were there. Yeah, we had plans <laughs> to be in Boulder that night, so uh so it goes. <laughs> That's cool. And I feel like you and I feel like you didn't talk nine inch nails up enough when you saw them that I'm like, eh, I can wait to see a band I really love here. Yeah. I just didn't like get to see them because we had to like clean up our tent that night. Yeah. But you just kind of yeah. heard them, right? Yeah. It did sound good. Um, what'd you think of Red Rocks though? Just like the space. Incredible. I didn't realize it was like pretty much a line of like benches all going down towards the stage. And yeah. the stage like looks up at everyone. It's almost, I guess it's kind of like the art center, but a billion times nicer <laughs> and cooler. <laughs> way, way cooler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the air is like crazy up there. <laughs> it is very crazy up there. I can't believe Fish is banned from there though, because that would have been a band Allegedly. on my list to see. Allegedly banned. I'm pretty sure it's true if they played like four nights in a soccer stadium instead. I think Dix is bigger. So I think that's why. Dix. <laughs> <laughs> big dicks um <laughs> i think that sporting arena is like bigger though so that might be a little bit why but i, I don't like, know i feel like they could play there for like two each straight yeah the ru- rumor has anything. it just like the fans got into like they were too too rowdy back in the 90s and red rocks just had enough of it back during machine gun tray yeah <laughs> wild times um what else was going on this weekend? Did you um, catch any of the Taylor Hawkins tribute? I know we talked about it a little off air. So I watched some of it when we got back Monday, but I'm only about halfway through it because I didn't realize it was going to be a six hour show. <laughs> yeah, it was and it's long. <laughs> yeah, like being there is one thing. I, it's like tough to sit home for like five hours straight and not do anything. So I feel like I have to watch this kind of like I'm watching a show. And spread it out a little bit so like i keep taking breaks like after each set ends because like you feel like each band gets like three songs yeah pretty much until the foo fighters come out the end but well i'm not up to them yet <laughs> i like how dave just like pops in randomly with these bands too like i saw him playing bass i saw him playing drums i saw him playing guitar like and he'll, he'll only just pop in for a song sometimes like it, he's not making the focus about him at all which no which is cool because he gets he gets accused of that at times, not in this yeah. scenario, but he it was natural headlines. the way he, he moved, did. He moves the needle. <laughs> yeah, I He's saw April. like I threw it on because it was all up on YouTube, and but for whatever reason it didn't start at the beginning, or when I put it on and I just kind of let it run. So I saw like ACDC, and then I saw some of uh, James Gang, which I didn't realize there was like a whole other band for joe walsh before the eagles but that's you didn't know that james i yeah i don't know <laughs> apparently that's like very common information <laughs> i just uh, <laughs> wasn't aware but that was like taylor's favorite band dave was saying like he had a james gang hat that he would wear all the time so they got back together just for this show which was pretty cool that is really cool i like this, how like all his favorite bands pretty much came to this show and i'm sure they're gonna be in la too yeah, I was wondering if they're going to run back like the exact show or if it's going to be. I mean, they probably can't do the exact show like they're going to recreate six hours down to the T. I think the lineup's a little different. Like, I'm pretty sure like the Weezer's drummer is going to be at the L.A. one. There's going to be like a bunch of different people. Yeah, but some of the same. But because he was like, put that on. he was totally a musician's musician. He was. That's what even Grohl said. Like he was like his music knowledge was like off the charts, and he always found like new bands thanks to Taylor. Yeah, yeah. He, he everyone like spoke so highly of him, and you saw like I'm sure you didn't have to finish watching to see the viral clips because they were everywhere. Oh, I saw those. Yep, I saw those before I got home. <laughs> yeah, like his son playing My Hero. That would give me like chills. Yeah, yeah. He was. He killed it too. He was really good. 
Friend of the pod, Jake, <laughs> thinks that should be their solution if they go forward. Just bring him in. That's, I mean, not a bad idea. It, I would just be worried just, like, throwing a kid into that A 16-year-old into <laughs> Foo Fighters? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a big, it's hard enough for, like, grown men to manage. Yeah. <laughs> but that would be pretty awesome. Um, who else? Who else was there? Uh, Stevie Nicks like talked a little. They just had Chappelle like a recording talked. of her. Oh, I didn't see Chappelle. I saw Travis Barker do. Uh, was it Monkey Wrench? I think. I think so. Yeah. He's Pull up the <laughs> We'll talk about him later when we talk about uh Black Bear. There's been a lot of Travis Barker this week, so <laughs> or coming up on the show, I should say. Yeah. <laughs> He's just so. He's making too many headlines. I'm borderline like getting sick of him, which I hurts me to say. <laughs> but it's it's I well, I don't know. I was gonna say it's not his fault he's all over the news, but kinda. <laughs> Staying with Kardashian, just like aggressively making out with her on Instagram all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and it yeah, it's literally on Instagram. <laughs> Nicole showed me comments like his kids are like, Dad, please stop. <laughs> we don't want to see we don't want to see. <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to see it. <laughs> no, I don't blame them. <laughs> but whatever. He's a rock star. They're going to do what they're going to do. At least it's all <laughs> consensual. He's got half of them beat. <laughs> it's fucked up. I'm sorry. But they like messed with the set list on set list FM for Foo Fighters. <laughs> oh, for that show? Yeah. I mean, it's so all over the place. It's not like a... It's well, just how, how much did they play, roughly? So Foo Fighters themselves played 12 songs. Oh, wow. That was such a long day. I was thinking, like, if I was in that crowd. Like, how do you... Six hours out there, even with seats. It started at 4.30 out there, like local time. Wow. You think the cool kids showed up late? Or would you, <laughs> everyone get there on time? No, I'm pretty sure everyone got there because you'd... <laughs> Pretty much didn't know if there were gonna be like surprise guests, and I wouldn't want to miss out on anything. So I'm, I'm yeah. thinking a lot of people are thinking that way. Yeah, it's a lot of beer money. You could get drunk, sober up, and get drunk again in six hours. Could. Yeah, I think we've seen some like art center shows have gone from like four to eleven. Although I feel like this one, yeah, yeah, four, I guess seven that's, that's yeah. kind of true. I've seen festivals where you're out all day, but we were like teenagers then, so it's probably a little different now. Yeah. 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 Now it's it's hard enough just to like dance through a show. It always blows <laughs> my mind when I like get tired watching a band. I'm like, I'm not even really doing anything. Like they're performing and I'm just tired like air drumming half the songs. I and they're actually how, doing yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah. Like they these artists, like they have to be in somewhat of good shape to like manage this. But yeah, I don't know. It's pretty cool. I liked it though. I liked that they made it accessible to everyone. That was nice of them because there was hope- backlash at first that like only like the rich people could really go. But the same with LA too. So I'm kind of hoping they do the same thing. Yeah, I think that's the plan. It's great though that they they didn't even charge. Usually it's like you gotta buy your ticket and then go to like their shoddy website and try and stream it. So it was nice they just put it right on YouTube. I was impressed by uh, Wolfgang Van Halen, too. Yeah, I saw that clip while playing uh, Hoffer Teacher. Yeah. Dude, he was nuts. <laughs> he picked up, like, right where his dad left off. It was really impressive. I had to listen yeah. to his band. Yeah. He made it look easy, too, which clearly it's not. But no, it just looked effortless the way he was just, like, traversing the fretboard. It was, man, it was I'm so sure cool. Some of that's jeans, I'm sure. Yeah, thanks a lot, Dad. Where's my guitar skills? <laughs> I'm out here you should tell him that. songs. <laughs> and smoke um, on the water. <laughs> yeah, it's been a couple of weeks since we did an episode because we had uh we ran the draft last week, so it's been two weeks. So I did go to two concerts in that time, and I was there with you for one. Oh yeah, you were. Without we got to get to that <laughs> because. <laughs> We didn't really get to hang out at that show, but it's it's a classic. It's it was a classic case of 
two friends there with respective friend groups and it's hard to then combine to like eight people during a show i kept looking back at you longingly i don't know if you noticed i did and i was like <laughs> trying to go up there but like no one wanted to move <laughs> we were like just like watching a ship pass in the night and like i'm on land <laughs> we were like 15 yards apart it was like it would have been so easy to just stand by uh that was a great show though uh, we're that talking was an about awesome show. Some 41 and Simple Plan, by the way, um, at the Stone Pony last weekend, two weeks ago. I guess two weeks ago. It's not important. Two but, weeks ago now? They, do um, you remember Some 41 being that good, though? Yeah. You do? Okay. <laughs> I do. Because every time I see them, I feel like I always leave thinking like, holy shit, but these guys are way better than they get credit for, I think. Because it's easy to lump them into like, the blink group but they're way more talented like musicians they really are because they kind of like that video that you sent me like where he was a uh, the punk rock nba right that's it oh yeah i've been watching a ton of his videos by the way Shout they're out. so good i gotta watch yeah. some more of those too yeah but uh yeah so like he pointed out like that like how they balance like metal and like pop punk but they've always kind of kind of ventured into like metal and stayed there and you yeah. can hear it in their music. Yeah. And, and then meanwhile, when, like they're not your typical pop punk band where they play like three chords, but like, these guys actually know what they're doing. Yeah. And then Brown Sound left because he thought they were getting too metal, which I thought was interesting. If I heard that right. I feel like that's that's what he said. And then that's the other direction, I think. They're going too pop. Oh, that see, that makes way more sense. So yeah, because then Underclass Hero was way softer an album, which I still like. Yeah. And at the show, did you notice they like kind of grouped all of Underclass Hero together? They did, they did like right with me, set. Walking Disaster, and like maybe one other, like all back to back to back. And they grouped their short songs together too, which is pretty funny. Yeah, Never Wake Up. That was cool. Um, was there was there anything? And I see. Um, yeah, <laughs> you're an asshole. You're... <laughs> <laughs> um, so. It was, we learned that they were not playing All Killer, No Filler in full, but they did play some randoms off of it. Like they played um, Rhythms, which was cool. Or was it Summer? I always mix these two up. Did they play both? No. They definitely played Summer. Was it Summer? They played Summer. Okay, yeah. Summer. I remember yeah. he's like, he's like, he's like, here's a rare one for you guys. Yeah. And they played it. Yeah. That was cool. I would have liked to have heard "Handle This." I was a little bummed they didn't play "Handle This," but I love that's an underrated song too. I won't be picky. <laughs> yeah, they they didn't play. How how do I put this? I was really excited to hear everything they played. There was nothing they like played that I wasn't happy about. I would have just liked more. So that's always a good sign for a band. They definitely leaned into the nostalgia too. Like it wasn't necessarily an all killer no filler show, but they didn't play anything post uh walking not walking disaster. Oh, Underclass you're, Hero. You're right. Underclass Hero. You're right. Uh, it was uh 13 Reasons. Voices. Oh, voices, reasons. Is that a Netflix show? I think that's a Netflix show. I think it's definitely a Netflix show. <laughs> Someone who kills them. 13 reasons why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how I was thinking. Of. Um <laughs> Yeah, because we were listening to Youngblood today, and he was on that soundtrack. So that's I saw that. I that's one of his <laughs> albums. <laughs> um, and we'll then soon. <laughs> I have to, I have to walk it back a little and just apologize for any simple plan slander I've yes. done on this podcast because I think we both do. They were so good. They, I, I always kind of wrote them off as like one of the bands the girls liked, and like they're a little like maybe softer or whatever, but. They were really good, and they didn't just seem good because they were bringing nostalgia. Like they seemed like a just a good band. And they were having fun up there too. Yeah, yeah, so much fun. The drummer, <laughs> when the drummer, he's like, "I really miss like crowd surfing," and they got mad at me for doing this last time because of the pandemic. But I'm just gonna do it anyway. And like, didn't the last show get canceled because someone got COVID? Yeah, <laughs> maybe you shouldn't, but. <laughs> He put on like a hazmat suit and then just dove into the crowd. That and then like cool. didn't take it off till he got back on stage. Yeah. And then their little uh their little medley of um All Star, Skater Boy, 
and was it Mr. Brightside? Mr. Brightside, yeah. Yeah. Which and felt like Scooby Doo. <laughs> and Scooby Doo. It felt like Mr. Brightside got the loudest applause, which <laughs> kind of a bummer when a song that's not yours that you played one verse of. It's people love response. that song though yeah i always it, forget like how like... massive that song is until like you see people react to it at like a bar or at a show yeah it's a monster of a song uh but my favorite from them was their new song iconic like that was a good of, one it was so much heavier than everything else they've done and it, it just left me thinking like these guys have more in the tank like they're not just out here i mean Let's be real. Like people want to hear perfect and I'm um, just a kid and shut up and all that. Um, but the new stuff, like I like the direction. It it's sounded kind of, good live. Yeah. I wound up running that album back like a few days after the show. And it's good. You feel differently about it now? A little bit. I mean, I think Iconic might be the one of the more heavier ones on it, but no, yeah. I, uh, they really, they surprised me so they not only Sorry. surprised us so like quick side story so like in between sets we went back to get like one last drink before our son came on mm-hmm. and we were talking to the bartenders a little bit and like they said simple plan was the best live band that's played there all summer and they've been working every show wow and that's like high praise she's like yeah the county crows are here last week and they and they sucked <laughs> and we were like we were like why did they suck she's like well they don't play like any of their songs the way they sound recorded like do something new for all their live shows uh, so they didn't really like that, but they said simple plan like sounded the best and like the crowd was the best. So that's cool. Like that's high praise coming from someone that's at every show. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, they they were they were great. Um that was that was a really good show, had a lot of fun. Great um, show. And they let their guitarist shine too, which I thought was cool. They're like, he's actually a lot yeah. better than our songs. Yeah. So we're gonna like show you right now. <laughs> yeah, like our songs aren't really that complicated, so just do whatever you want let, let the people see what you got <laughs> and it was impressive <laughs> yeah yeah he was shredded um i guess it was the night before that me and nicole saw amberlin at house of independence um and you played... sent me down uh never take friendship personal like loophole yeah. like that was all i was listening to on the plane to colorado <laughs> it's so good <laughs> they're really good band it's just funny because they've always been like nicole's favorite band and like I like plenty of Amberlin songs, but I was like, "That's her band, like cool. She likes them." But the more like we see them, she plays them. Like, no, they're just a really good band. They really like, are. The live show was they were so good up there. You could tell they were. It's early on in the tour. I think it was maybe like it might only have been the second stop. I think they might have started in New York, and um, so they were still kind of like getting their feet wet. Like they made a point to say they're like, "Yeah, we." what was it they played new york they went home to florida worked their day jobs for like three or four days and then flew back to new jersey to play these shows which is just wild to think about that like these guys are playing still working three or four nights in a row in their band and then also just have like day jobs but we we got there we got there kind of late and we walk in and we're getting our IDs checked and they're like, yeah, you should be okay. Like the band's going to go on soon. And then the band goes on like as soon as they say that. So we go down the stairs because house of independence, you walk in upstairs and then the venue's like down and we just post up literally right in front of the stage and watch the whole show. Like one row back. It was awesome. That's, you like can never do that when you're late for shows either. No, and that's why <laughs> I always like tease Nicole because like she's notoriously late sometimes. And um I'm like, all right, well, this is this is her band. So if we're gonna be late, like it's it's her bed to sleep in. And we wind up being front row. I'm just like, she can't keep getting away with this. <laughs> it's not supposed to work out. <laughs> but it was great. Yeah, front row. They played they played the whole album and then they did uh a couple others. Um, one off a silver line which was cool and you could tell they were really excited about the new songs they're like you know we know a lot of people might not know these yet but like we think this is our best work yet and we're just really excited to play it so like here we go which i just like good for them yeah it's good to see that like we don't care what you think we love this song we're gonna play it 
I made sure to like be enthusiastic because I do really like those songs. And then we the loved last that EP song, when that came out. We think we gave it a pretty solid review when we talked about it. Yeah, yeah, I want more of that. So hopefully they they keep going. The last song they uh, let the crowd join them on stage. <laughs> so the, whoever wanted to just went up on stage. <laughs> Everyone was on stage with the band, like dancing, and it was it was chaos. Did you guys go up? <laughs> no, I stayed down. I kept pushing okay. Nicole to go up, and she she didn't want to. So I'm like, all right, that's fine. I did they like... end with Fiend? <laughs> no, oh no. Um, You're saving that for that they... the next night. Yeah, it's not the, not the right album, I guess. And then like, it's yeah, I don't know. Um. I don't even remember what they ended with because it's been like two weeks. I don't feel like looking up the set list, but <laughs> it was fun. It was a, it was a good time, and it's such a small venue. Like I think that place holds five hundred people, thousand, like tops, maybe, or yeah. is it five hundred? I think it's five hundred. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. They kept calling it Newark, though. I'm like, you flew into Newark, but you're not in Newark. <laughs> this is Asbury. You got to know Asbury Park, <laughs> and. Real quick, like aside, there was this one like really drunk dude, and he's like kept raising his hand and like yelling, like when um the lead singer was like talking to the crowd, and the guy's like, "All right, like this this kid really wants to say something, like wh- what?" And he's like, "He's like just just so you know, uh, I'm a Benny, but I'm really excited to be here." Blah. blah. <laughs> They're like, "We don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> We're not from here." <laughs> yeah, he he was pretty obnoxious. <laughs> Like most of the show i'm like you outed yourself as like not from here and now you're being the most annoying so way to go Good job <laughs> yeah. oh some of these people just cracked me up just like if you're the only one if everyone's like doing one thing and you're the only one doing something else like maybe just rethink it yeah just a little take, i'm not take saying a beat. you know march to a different drum whatever but like within reason here don't be don't be a weirdo yeah just nod your head enjoy the songs this isn't about you no (laughs) no one cares where you're from everyone's just trying to have a good time yeah yeah it was weird but no it was a great time two good shows and now it's uh kind of chilling chilling on shows for a little bit which is kind of nice because it was august was crazy that's pretty much calm for you until my cam right yeah and see here now is like right around the corner too it's see here now oh, that's like a couple of weeks right it's the 17th and 18th so it's like next weekend or two weekends are you going both days or just the uh, steve nicks night both days both days and then so you can see green day yeah yeah i'm excited to see green day i'm excited to see billy strings um there's this band called dogs in a pile that sound a lot like fish, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, Gary Clark Jr. is going to be there, who's awesome blues guitarist. Plays like a big semi hollow Epiphone. He's always smoking a cigarette, like just. And he's awesome. He's just a, a badass. I don't know you a thing. He's like an incredible song. Yeah, yeah. He's. I just can't wait to just like groove. Um, yeah, I actually don't know like a ton of bands on this lineup. Um, Cage the Elephant's going to be there. Who was a band that I didn't really think much about. And then I saw them live and one of my friends really likes them. And they're a really good band. Like they have some range with the types of songs they write. So I don't like, know. I've lost touch with them because like the last it's like No Rest for the Wicked is like the last Yeah. They I have was a, really into them. They have one album with like a girl on the front. I don't know if the album's called I want to say like Tell it's Me called I'm Girl pretty. on the Front. Girl on the Front album. Yeah, that's the <laughs> official name. No, I'm right. Tell Me I'm Pretty. Um, has this song, Too Late to Say Goodbye, which is, I just think it's a really cool song. It's like kind of slow, psychedelic builds. Um, it's just a song that I didn't know like they were that kind of band. So they'll be there. Um, My Morning Jacket will be there, who's another just like great rock band. I don't know any of these bands' songs like in and out, but still be cool to see that yeah it'll just be a nice like send off to summer hang out on the beach listen to music and who knows maybe i'll like become bigger fans of some of these bands after seeing them that happens so it's very possible yeah 
plus Green Day will be cool. Green Day, you know, is going to kill it. So. Yeah, and I would hope in a festival setting, like I don't have to worry about them playing like weird new songs that nobody wants to hear. No, Respe- they're going to respectively. Do, they're going to do a greatest hit set. <laughs> yeah. You think they'll play Jesus of Suburbia? Is that like wishful thinking? I think so. Yeah, that's like probably. that's it's like too a long. headlining tour song. Yeah, they could play. Like they play for us in Brooklyn. When we saw them. Uh, I think so, but I don't remember. That was, we're talking like five, six years ago now, right? Yeah. <laughs> Plus Let's pre-COVID, see. that equals like 20 years ago. Green Day, Barclays. Let's yeah, that see. was when Revolution Radio came out. Underrated were, album. Yeah. Like people say they haven't put a, out anything good since American Idiot. That one is actually, I enjoyed yeah. it a lot. So. Yeah, I don't know if it was just because we were going. But I listened to the crap out of the album. And I think if I didn't like it, I wouldn't have kept listening to it. So it was good. Still Breathing. Love that song. I don't know if that's the exact name. It's been so long. They kept playing it like during baseball playoffs. And that was like all the time. Still standing. Because I'm still standing. Breathing. Still breathing. Still breathing. Still standing. Yep. That's still breathing. Still breathing. Yeah. Great song. Oh, wow. What a <laughs> set list you got that night. Let's hear a song. So of it. we did. Get, so we got two encores. They did American Idiot and Jesus of Suburbia as one encore. Whoa. Left came out, and then Billy did uh, Ordinary World on acoustic guitar, and ended with Good Riddance on acoustic. Wow! <laughs> but they that's, played twenty eight songs. Holy hell! It's a lot of music. Did they do King Shout for a Day? Shout King for a Day. Shout. They did. Yep. Yeah. You think they would like? And then that went into bump and grind <laughs> slash shout slash always look on the bright side of life slash satisfaction slash hey dude. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Man, I don't that show was a blur to me. I don't think we I remember liked... being blown away by it. Like I couldn't believe how good they were. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes the show's like so good in the moment that then it doesn't stick with you as well. And then you try to think back to how good it was and you I don't know. Sometimes it's just the moments like it's too good to yeah. even. Yeah. Thank God for setlist.fm. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out. Um, We had a bunch of new albums finally. We did. Yeah, it was a little little bit of a dry spell for for a bit, but um, September yeah. brought the Busy goods. month coming up though. Nice. Nice. We could, we'll get into that at the end because you know and I don't know, but sure there's more stuff coming but yeah we had one two three we got four albums to talk about well three albums one ep where where should we start where do we start brett do you want to start with the ep and just like a nice little yeah little start opener us. start with our new jersey friends the front bottoms Teresa ep one of the grandma eps so for those unaware, the Front Bottoms have been putting out these grandma EPs that they name after their grandmas, and they re-record like four or five songs that they had originally done before they were signed or anything. So I have like a few albums that pretty much just like exist on YouTube or like burn CDs or however. And um, yeah, they've been redoing those songs and it's been really, really cool. What'd you what'd you think of this one, Brett? So I think this one, I know it's dumb to like rank things as people like to say when they talk about music, but if I had to rank, I think Rose is still far and away my favorite, but this one is definitely in the number two position. Like I can't wait to hear More Than It Hurts You live at Starland. Staring at unfamiliar ceilings. Oh man. I didn't realize it. it, So did they use the same chord from Awkward Conversations in the beginning of that? to make this song um because if you play the beginning it's definitely the same beginning of awkward conversations yeah um i don't know off the top of my head but i i believe you because most of his songs are kind of in that same little power chord area in the same neighborhood so there's a good chance <laughs> um yeah i didn't play him back to back but now i want to do that but this song is so jersey though and i love it and i can't wait to hear them do it live and i just yeah. it just reminds you of like not that i forget 
I feel like I don't appreciate them as much as I do. Like I go in like spells, like when yeah. we're seeing them, I'll listen to nothing but them. Yeah. Then I kind of get sidetracked for a while before I come back to them. That's because I'm sure like you were in the same boat as me when you first discovered them. It was like all you listened to for yes. the whole summer. Yep. Yeah. So now it, it ebbs and flows, but they're one of my favorites of all time. Oh yeah. Um and the first not the first time, but I saw them at um the Stone Pony inside when um Talano the Hawk was out. And they played pretty much all of self titled and all of Talano the Hawk. And somewhere in the middle of that, they played this. And because they did the um and I should leave because everyone here is doing some new drug except for me. And then the whole crowd yelled, Why? And they did like because I don't have the money, whatever. And I'm standing there, I'm like, what is this song? <laughs> like they have two albums. This song is not on those albums. What is happening here? And then like eventually, like I found that album on YouTube and stuff, but they've been playing that a while, so they must it must be one of their favorites, especially if they just re re-recorded it. That was everybody up like a million listens. <laughs> so good. The album name was My Grandma vs. Pneumonia. <laughs> I gotta find a copy of that. I used um, to have it when I had like used a, BitTorrent, but it's on YouTube and there's a link to download it. And it's like by someone who's friends with the band. So it's all it's all legit. Oh, there you go. Yeah, because I have it downloaded into my Spotify so I can listen to it. And there's been so many times I've been on like trains or somewhere where I don't have service. So that, play that. was my album. Yeah. What do um, you think of it though? I loved it. I I really liked it. Um uh, One That Hurts You was awesome, but I, I know that one so well that like it didn't feel as new. But Hello World, I never heard that one before. Uh um, that was a great one too. I looked it up. Someone said it was off Grandma vs. Pneumonia, so I don't know if just the copy I had like missed it or if this person's wrong, but it's just such like a, a sincere, vulnerable song, just like losing touch with a friend and like uh, just like the way he writes lyrics. They're so simple sometimes, but like they say so much at the same time. It's just, I don't know. They might be my so favorite good. songwriters because I feel like it's just... They're like them and the Menzingers are up there for me. Yeah, they just have a way of like resonating with with you. Um, and how catchy yeah, was a uh, supply of power? Like that's yeah. gonna be a good live one too. That one was also off Grandma vs. Pneumonia, and the original one just has the la 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 part. But for this, they added words over it, which I thought was really cool. Um, because I guess he's just like, I don't want to just sing this chorus that's just la 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 la. Like I want to, I like that they're tweaking some of these songs, not drastically, but just enough to kind of make them fresh. Um, I got to yeah. hear the originals because, like, I feel like I like these are all listening for the first time for me. Yeah, so now I'm curious what the originals sound like. Yeah, I did a few today where I went like back and forth on the new one and the original just to just to compare, and it's all just all the originals just sound like stripped down versions with like more raw vocals like they're still like i feel like they're still a raw band even though they're so much more produced now and like have access to just way better recording stuff but they still are able to like give off that like dude with a guitar vibe i don't know yeah, i know what you mean though yeah but like i just know like they're on electra like records now like that's really big Oh, I I didn't I didn't know that. I remember they were on Field by Robin and everyone got like really nervous because that's where fans go to change and die. Then they but, put out like one of their best albums in years. Yeah. They they sickness don't sickness and in flames. Yeah. They don't have an album I don't like. And I like all these EPs. It's yeah. I wish uh they're playing um like the end of September, but not it's at Starland, out, though, right? No, it's at, like, Long Island or, like, somewhere out in New York. Just don't feel like doing it. No. <laughs> it's one of those drives that's, like, not that far, but it's going to take you, like, three hours. They'll play so, Starland uh, again soon enough. Yeah. Yeah, they'll come come back around. Those are, like, some of the best live shows, too. And yeah. Down. Yeah. The energy is just, like, insane. When I saw Fish at the Gorge, I had a front bottom shirt on 
and some dude started talking to me about them and he was like a west coast guy and i was telling him like how crazy are their shows and he's like oh like i really like them but the shows aren't too crazy here so i guess we're just kind of spoiled because we get hometown shows every time i didn't know i thought like it was everywhere yeah i don't know maybe that guy was just lame (laughs) he was just high might be (laughs) it was at the gorge so yeah yeah he was just lost watching fish and then dave matthews and just camping for an entire month (laughs) yeah but um i really like the cp i they're not really due for an album are they uh 2020 was our last one so they're they might be in the studio right now yeah they're not a band that forces an album out every year. No. Which I, I appreciate. And because of these EPs, they don't stop giving us music. So it's pretty nice. And these are usually like the tweeners. They'll, they'll put this out, then a new album comes like a year or two later. Fun fact I personally broke this news, but no, no, it wasn't big enough like on the waster for it to really pick up. But I got to interview him like back in the day. I think it was right around maybe when like Back on Top came out. So like 2015, 2014. No, it must have been. I'm sorry. It was 2013 after Talent of the Hawk. And I asked him, like, you have all these old songs. Like, what's the deal with them? Because like, they're not actually on albums. He's like, oh, we. he's like, I don't want to say too much, but like, we have plans to, to do some stuff with them. So and like, then like Rose oh, came out like way yeah. after that. Yeah. So that one is permanently that's like cool. stained in like fall of 2015 in my mind. So that, that was like all I listened yeah, to that yeah. fall. Flying Model Rockets is so good. 12 Feet Deep, Jim Bogart. 12 Feet Deep is. And there's a. Because I was researching some of these songs and no one's positive if Awkward Conversations is an old song or a new song. Because there's no like record of it really. And then the other EP has Tie Dye Dragon, which is a new song. But this EP doesn't have a new song. So I don't know what they're doing. But as long as they keep giving us music, I'm good with it. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Um, you want to stay on the uh the emo train and talk about tiny moving parts? Let's do it. Let's go out to the Midwest side of emo. So Tiny Moving Parts, um, they are from Minnesota. Uh, This is a self-titled album, 10 songs, 27 minutes. It's their, I want to say fifth album, but I'm not not positive. I'll do the math for you. Four or five, somewhere in there. I'm going to say five, final answer. We're researching, researching, researching. Still researching? Being very slow to load. One, two, three, okay. four, five, six. Six. Oh, Darn. I don't count this couch, though, but I guess it does. What? Count. That album's so good. <laughs> it's I, don't ever I don't think I ever listened to it. Oh, you would love it. There's just, they have uh, two interludes on it. That's just Brett Favre's, like, farewell speech. <laughs> <laughs> well, now oh, I have to listen. You gotta listen to that album. It's so good. Oh, I feel man. Because, like, like Tiny Moving Parts started with me with Pleasant Living. That album's really good. But I like all Sundresses. Their, I like all their stuff. Uh yeah. Entrances yeah, you, and exits. Dude, you should boxcar. Oh, uh, I'm I'm definitely gonna Sorry, listen I'm just to that tomorrow. Songs now. <laughs> I love when that happens when a band puts out a new album and you really like it, and then you just start listening to all their old stuff again, too. Dude, you gotta listen to this couch. It's so good. Um, but we're not here to talk about their first album. We're here to talk about their most recent album, a self-titled. We had a few self-titled albums this week, but we'll get there. Um, what do you think of the Midwest Emo Boys and their noodley guitars? So I know like when bands put out like a self-titled album, it's usually like a change of gear or they're trying to make like a statement. And I feel like this was a return to form for them for me at least in my eyes, because I feel like I don't remember a thing from their last album, and I know, like, there were songs that I liked, but for some reason, it just it got, like, memory hold. But, like, I loved every single song on this one. 
yeah. and I keep and it's with at 27 minutes long, like it's an easy one to just keep he keep hitting play on over and over again. Yeah, you and, click that little square on Spotify, so it yep. just keeps starting over. Just let it go. <laughs> and though, like I got stuck in like listening to Decibel over and over again because you know how I like to repeat songs when I listen yes. to an album for the first time. <laughs> Did and you think it just, was American Girl at first? A little bit until like you got a little noodly, and then like there's yeah. my tiny moving parts. Just that but, first like two seconds, you're like, wait a second, I recognize these chords, and then it's not American Girl. <laughs> yeah, this this album is really really good. Like I think they nailed it. Like it almost goes without saying, but the instrumentals are absolutely insane. The things they're phenomenal. Um, Dylan does on this on guitar are just wild. But I really like the lyrics because this album has like a a unique way of being like kind of sad and self-deprecating and like almost like woe is me, like life can be hard. But then nearly every song has this hopefulness about it, which I think is kind of what gives it like replayability. Because if they were all just like sad, depressing songs, it's kind of hard to keep spinning them. But when the songs end with this hopefulness, you're able to like get out the the anger or the sadness or like the shittier emotions and then you bring it back with like the happiness and the like i'll get through this or whatever like what is it um An occasional um, yell jotting notes like he ends with like i'm never giving up that's awesome that's awesome without that line it changes the whole mood of the song i just i love i love what they did with the lyrics on this so good they like kind of like like if you don't look too close you might miss the whole message of what the songs are deep down because like they all like you said like they do all sound happy and like shreddy and noodly but when you look at like what he's actually saying like it kind of no yeah, goes, some... it, like you said it gives you hope but even though it does tackle like tough topics it still makes yeah. you feel good at the end of the day yeah there's some there's some rough subject matter on this a little bit um like um oh, demons song. demons yeah. demons are taking over like that song i listened to a couple times just to make sure i don't think there's an uplifting side to that one so yeah i think so <laughs> i think it's sticking with the uh no but the theme for with the inner demons for the most part i really like north shore like i love how they do the like they'll just let out a yell like he has like uh all these questions i keep asking but nobody's in the room and he goes no one and the guitar goes doo, 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 doo. <laughs> like just the guitars <laughs> go crazy it's just so good like this album is so fun to sing along to in in the car and listen to it the first time i'm like i have to just play this on repeat because i want to sing these songs so bad and i don't know them <laughs> so <laughs> i just i listened to this album for like three four hours straight the first day it came out it's so good and i've still been listening to it i think um all my guts is like definitely the catchiest chorus I on bring the that album. One up. yeah such a good chorus um day drunk has one of my favorite lines where he's like me in the kitchen looking up at the clouds i wonder what they talk about like i don't know <laughs> it's it's kind of silly but i just i just like it Definitely something you think about when you're day drunk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think Jotting Notes is probably my favorite song because the guitars are so, so good. I don't know how he plays guitar, how he does. It really it's, is impressive. It's like sort of Van Halen-ish, but like not better, but like what am I trying to say here? <laughs> it's it's clean it's cleaner and more like because it's the same like like the guitar tapping, but it's presented differently. Is it a like a pedal that's lacking? Like that's why it doesn't sound like Van Halen. Yeah, it's not there's not much question? like distortion going on. Like because if you look at um, I think it's day drunk. It just opens with him singing and playing guitar, but he's still doing like this crazy shit on the guitar, which you don't usually get on like a clean solo guitar. But yet he does it like he it's I just think I think it's really unique how they write their songs. And 
the fact that he sings and plays these guitar parts is just even more impressive. I would love to get them on or him on or just anyone from the They're band. our next target. Yeah. Yeah, I would love to make that happen because they're so good and they're, they're a very unique band. This this album is way up there for me. Before, so we had the week off like we were talking about and it kind of hit like a lull. Like we we've had a lot of good albums this year, but I haven't had an album recently where you get really hooked on it, listen to it over and over and over. Since Cold Years? Yeah, pretty much. Um, and I, I was just like kind of missing that. And then this album dropped and it it filled the void like pretty easily. So that, that's always fun. Just get super hooked on an album. No better feeling. No. It's always a high we're chasing. <laughs> yeah. And they're they're touring like Europe right now, so maybe they'll be here in the spring. They always we... tour with bands we like to. Like yeah. did we see them? They open for Wonder Years, right? Yeah. Yeah, Wonder Years. And, and modern um... baseball ones, maybe. Yeah, but I think we New missed... York. Was it Foxing? I don't know. I mix up some of those shows because it was all the same like time of year. But yeah, they're they're usually on good tours. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully they come over here with a good lineup in the spring. I'm trying to in the spring, yeah. chill out for winter. <laughs> Other than fish, obviously. So I got mad that Modest Mouse announced that tour. I'm like, you guys couldn't do this like in next spring or like. Oh yeah, and New York's the last stop, but it's like December seventeenth. Is that your birthday? December seventh. So it's like uh, 10 days after. Uh, I was close. I'll be gearing um, up for fish on by then, probably. Hopefully. Yeah, and like the heart of December like that with Christmas and just all the like the shit going on, like there's no chance I can commit to a December 17th concert like no. five months out. And As much as I love that album. Yeah. My math is horrible. Worst. Three months out. <laughs> I'm not a numbers guy. <laughs> that is a great album, though, so. Who knows? Maybe we could game time decision it somehow, but probably not. Decision it. Um, decision. Decision. <laughs> decision. GTD. <laughs> uh, you want to do Black Bear next? I want to save Young Blood because I yeah, really we can do Black Bear next. <laughs> um, do you want to do you want to introduce this one because you. You sent this my way. I didn't sure, never so, heard of this person, band person. person. So he was on uh, like machine on a uh, ticket to my downfall. He was on uh, to my ex girlfriend. What's that song? Uh, called? Yeah, and I'm gonna get the exact um, song. God. No, you're or right. I, my my ex's best friend. My ex's best friend. There it is. Yeah. So, but I didn't even know this album came out. So, shout out to friend of the pod, Matt Maceos, sent this in our pop punk group chat. I was like, guys, I think I found like this year's ticket to my downfall. And it's, you know, he's like, it blows away like Machine Gun Kelly's new album. So, I could put it on. And I honestly, like, I loved it. Like, the features, I couldn't believe like he, there's like Burt McCracken of the Use, Jordan yeah, of Newfound cool. Glory, uh, Bass Side, which was probably the best song on the yeah, album. Definitely. Far and away. Uh, definitely that's some nice. weird tracks on here i feel like he's not usually pop punk and i feel like that did show on some of the tracks but i feel like every feature song was good yeah the jordan one was probably my second favorite nothing matters yeah machine gun kelly one was all right that, that kind of yeah it was kind numb of numb to machine gun kelly doing pop punk at this point <laughs> yeah but overall i mean i did scratch that itch that we were hoping we'd get on machine gun kelly's album earlier this year uh again another travis barker project yeah, travis we barker to bring up and here. andrew goldstein on every track because i kept doing show info on all the songs to say but yeah he did it again like he's just spinning this web <laughs> of artists that he's turning pop punk and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger but i overall i really like this one i keep listening to it along oh, with it's... tiny moving parts so 
great suggestion by Matt, as he always finds some great new bands. So hopefully, have him on again soon. But yeah, what do you think of it? Yeah, uh, I agree. Like the features are really cool. Um, I liked it a lot. So here's where I'm gonna just sound lame, but the first two songs I was feeling it, and I'm like, "Who's this band? This is cool." And then Nicole's like, "Oh, this is like a Travis Barker one. It's like just a guy," and that like just instantly, it just turned me off. I'm sorry, I can't help it. I can't listen to it the same, knowing that it's just like Travis Barker doing the formula on every song. I tried to tell like block that fact out and just listen to it for what it is i can't do it i just don't i don't like it it it's, has been it's so heavy tra- travis barker like even the avril lavigne album this year that was him too yeah you look uh, at every Machine song kelly it's again just, it's travis barker and it's uh that andrew goldstein guy and i don't know i had good songs the features were cool but just felt just like another new pop punk Travis Barker production. Just over it. I'm jaded and old, I guess, but uh that's how I feel. So sorry. Hey, you're being honest. <laughs> I'm sure I'm gonna have some <laughs> honest thoughts on next album. <laughs> yeah. I didn't uh one thing I, I noticed with this that I don't know if if it's in my head or not, but um I feel like the songs are all like the same exact like volume level the whole way through if that makes sense like it feels like there's parts that pick up but the song is still just on like this singular track i don't know i don't know if that's now i'm wondering like all music i listen to if the volume changes or not in the songs but i don't know i just feel like it's missing like that bite or that edge the, the or... treble yeah I don't, like like bert was like the screamiest part which was cool. Like, I mean, not not every artist has to have screams to be good, but um, it just I there wasn't like like the emotion wasn't there. I guess it felt very uh like monotone, formulaic. Yeah, as you said, the, the last two songs had um Mike po- Posner 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 as a writer, the dude who does uh no song uh like I I took a pill in Ibiza. Oh yeah, yeah. That guy's like a really good songwriter, but like he just can't seem to like hit it on his own on his solo stuff. But like I just I've heard random interviews with him and he's just like a really seems like a really good guy. So I was happy to see him have like some writing credits on those last two. Yeah, they keep the acoustic track, right? Hazel inside at the end. Yeah. And back in rehab had like that really cool, like it was like a two note guitar with um like what was going on behind it um it was a like a really cool bass line and then just like the guitar kept doing like this same like two notes as the bass just like went off it was just like it had a really cool vibe to it i thought i liked that one it was like spacey a little bit right yeah yeah and like you said poltergeist was great and i was looking i'm like who from bayside was in this and then i realized like no it's just like the whole the band. band yeah which is i think that's really cool like the feature is just we're gonna bring the band in like that that's a great yeah. idea i think i i told matt and that whole group this but i gotta really dive back into bayside even though i know like they're so much better live than what they put out on yeah. studio albums but i still need to go back down that rabbit hole yeah i never they were always a band where there were songs i really liked but i never was like put on a bayside album through and through very often the self-titled one from like 2004 or five somewhere around then but like we've talked about a bunch before like anytime i've seen them live they always blow me away and they have that song winter that's like incredibly sad but it's a good song that's a really sad (laughs) song (laughs) yeah but sometimes you need a sad song um they're live i'm good live at the bayside social club oh i should check that out because yeah like live i just feel like they they turn it up to like a different level the solos get crazier and yeah it was cool to see them i wonder how those features come to be just like like who thinks of it because like bayside's like that's random 
right? <laughs> it's not like base size. Like... Unless like depends how how deep Travis wants to get into his uh his yeah. pop punk context. Yeah. Um, and then lastly we have Young Blood, self titled, another self titled. Um, songs, twelve songs, thirty three minutes. Um, I will say off the bat, my favorite thing about Young Blood has always been what drew me to Young Blood was his similarities to like My Chem because he has certain songs that really kind of have that feel. And then as I listen to him more, that's the minority of his songs is that kind of style, but. What I like about him is that his albums are so all over the place. He writes songs that I feel like they sound like you've known them forever. And then you realize that it's just like a new song. So there's so many on like Sex Not Violence off this. I'm like, this song sounds like something I've heard before, but it's just him. Um, Funeral, I think, sounds just like a great like punk song. And it's just him again. So I don't know. I just think he's he's a really good songwriter and he comes off as very like genuine to me. So yeah, that's why I like Young Blood. That's right. Yeah. I know this was kind of your first um exposure to him. Yeah. So, so I was gonna actually come yeah. clean. So I didn't listen to the new albums. I spent most of the day with Weird, just nice. kind of trying to get a feel because like at first, so I kind of had the realization. And it was like a eureka moment almost. Like, I feel like if you're in the wrong environment listening to an album and it doesn't hit, like if you try listening to it in a different place, it might. Yeah. If this makes sense. Like I, I had it on the gym this morning. I'm like, this is just like, I don't feel this at all. Like I, I don't <laughs> really know working. what's going on here. <laughs> and I put it on at work. Like while I was working today. And then like, I was really getting into it and like enjoyed a lot of what it was doing. And, like the machine gun Kelly song on there. Um, just machine gun. <laughs> It's machine gun <laughs> yeah oh you mean the song with machine was, gun kelly or the song called machine gun i know the song with machine gun kelly it oh was, yeah uh, yeah so that's on my life no no my life that's foo fighters that song wasn't even originally on the album and then it got put on it's machine gun kelly weaseling his way into everything it was acting like that was yeah the, uh, weird yeah 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 that that one was cool but yeah, like um, Teresa yeah. was a really good one. Like the Freak Show, I think, is like incredible. Freak Show was awesome. Yeah. Um, like I dislike parents a little less than I did when I was texting you this morning. Yeah, it's a little like kind of like cringy the first time you hear it, but I don't know. It grew on me. So this whole this album like dominated my uh 2020 listening. Like Super Dead Friends. I feel like you would like that one because it's got like strong like beast, one, yeah. Beastie Boys vibes. I like Mars too. Yeah. Yeah, and then like you know, like uh, strawberry lipstick is a little more like boppy, and it's like, all right, this is all right. But cotton candy has really. like cringy lyrics a little bit. But yeah, um, God save me, don't drop me out is another really good one. But now I feel like I got to go back and listen to uh, the one it, before this, the one twenty first century love liability. Yeah, that one's that one's great. Like. That one has like just he he doesn't skip any genres on his music. Like if he wants to make a song that raps and then almost has like a like ska feeling reggae chords, he's gonna do that. Like and this latest album has a lot of like like it has the some of the the edgier stuff with like the grittier vocals, but then it has poppier dance songs like tissues or sex not violence um then it has like sweeter slow songs he's just he's all over the place and um the whole album was was just it was mostly him and then uh this guy uh chris uh griatti i don't know how to pronounce his name but he's on most of the tracks and i don't see travis barker's name anywhere which led me to doing some research because i always see people refer to youngblood as one of travis's people He's not. He has two songs he's done with Travis. And they're one, on Machine Gun Kelly's album. One albums. with Machine Gun Kelly, and then 11 Minutes with uh, Halsey, who he used to date. Um, but I just think this guy 
is like a real genuine artist. He puts out really good messages. I just, I don't know. I'm like smitten with this dude. I think he's just a really, he's, he's good for the future of music. If you ask me, I don't know something, something about him. Like this album is not even my style and I keep going back to it. I was going to say, because I thought like the way you were texting about it made it sound like you didn't like this one, but now I'm interested to. No, yeah. First, first listen, first listen, I, I didn't. And like, I didn't, it's not that I didn't like it, but it didn't have the young blood style that I was hoping for. And now the more I've gone back to it, I'm changing my tune because it does have that style mixed into things. I don't know. You just gotta listen to it. It's it's I think he's he's very unique with um his songwriting and how he just blends genres together. I would definitely be diving deeper in and can report back next week if it's a light. Yeah. We already have one album we push to next week or playlist. If yeah, uh, that's what Spotify defines it as, although it should be an album, but yeah, that's all all the what's what's the record label again? It's it pure noise. Pure they noise partnered and... with uh, PBR, and it's all covers of like nineties, two thousand stuff. Yep, and it's current. Dead formats, album. volume one. Nice, nice. Yeah, we'll definitely check that out for next week. Um, I want to talk next week. I'll talk about um, Pat Finnerty, um, YouTube guy. He does these. What makes this song stink? And it's kind of like tongue in cheek. But um, he did one on on emo girl, and he was talking about like this pop punk revival, and he decided to come up with a simple plan on how he could make an emo song, and ultimately buy himself a hot tub. <laughs> it's his ultimate goal. So he does this song kind of as a joke, and it it starts gaining traction. Um, there's so many layers to this. Like, just go to search pat finnerty on youtube and just watch like the two videos i promise you will laugh out loud many many times he he googles like generic emo guy to like put on the cover of this song and that kid winds up contacting him because his friends saw it and now he's playing bass for this song (laughs) like it's just it's out of control what's what's happening here but he created this fake band called august is falling Oh, there's so much to dissect. I'll I'll save it more for next next week. But search Pat Finnerty on YouTube and watch the emo girl video, and then like the one other update after. It's wild. <laughs> it's wild. The guy's so funny. He's just this Philadelphia dude who's a great musician, and yeah, I hope he gets his hot tub. Really do. You know what the video is called where like he comes up with a song? Or is that something different? Um, it's What Makes This Song Stink, Episode 7, Machine Gun Kelly. <laughs> I thought he starts making his own one. Yeah, because uh, yeah, that that's where it, it, it comes to be. His videos go very off the rails, but they still like maintain a storyline. Like he did What Makes This Song Stink, where he was like talking about Beverly Hills. And like while he's talking about it at one point, he's like driving the Boston market and he's going on all these tangents about Boston market. Then he winds up comparing Weezer to Boston market in the end for full circle. Like they used, they were so good and they'll always be delicious, but like, what, why are they still around? Like (laughs) it's, it's, it's really funny. He is really, really funny. So I'm happy that even if this song started as a joke, that this guy's getting, a ton of traction because he he really deserves it <laughs> he's hilarious yeah what makes this songs think episode seven at finnerty that'll please, also please be listen. on my homework for next week <laughs> yeah i promise you'll watch that and you'll wind up watching the rest of his videos because they're so good um yeah <laughs> oh and we can talk about uh the super group next week too that popped yes. up ls dunes that you heard before they were officially announced yeah with frank frank Eero, Sayasin. um i forgot who else off the top of my head Coheed. But, yeah Coheed. that was like part of the point yeah 
um there's a new armor for sleep album coming out soon and they responded to me on instagram when i said can't wait from the pods page so maybe we could get them on that would be cool that would be very cool they're jersey guys yeah nine nine so it comes out this friday so we'll talk about that next week too so we've all we've all got some homework for next week i'm gonna watch pat finnerty listen to armor for sleep listen to the other album that i already forgot with all the covers the pure noise one dead formats dead formats yeah volume one yes i guess they're planning more (laughs) nice 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 lots going on i'm excited i'm excited for the fall we had a nice little uh nice little end of summer and now fall's coming and i want to get back on interviews and get things kicking and parker will be back very soon (laughs) oh no (laughs) more weezer two weeks from (laughs) thursday (laughs) oh no i forgot yes i'm so excited i'm so excited (laughs) oh that's great that's great he's going to pitch us on our next our next what our next draft should be too oh sweet that'll be fun um yeah you have anything else for the people brett any any other closing remarks i feel like it wouldn't be episode of general admission without a, a session of general admission <laughs> so real quick before we go yeah so i can't believe that i was out in denver and had no <laughs> idea that they were going to be there at the same time for four days <laughs> <laughs> for four days straight <laughs> Uh, and like my cousin-in-law is like a fan too and he's like oh i didn't even know they were in town either so like we were like debating going but like my cousin didn't want my cousin's not a fan so she's like well you guys can go i was like well i'm here to see you too so i'm not gonna like we're not gonna bail on you so we'll just have to go out another time and visit your cousin and and see fish yep yeah they they ended pretty strong there was one night where there was kind of a rain delay i was talking to you about it that was so a they, crazy storm. We were like in it. So like it was like what I would imagine like Thor coming to Earth would look like was oh like what the lightning was like. Wow. Yeah. So that got super delayed. They just did one set, but they uh what a all, set though. All old songs, all fan favorites. They like, yeah. Really good. Yeah, they went out strong. And uh now we'll do some chilling until uh until Madison Square Garden. We're gonna go. Yes, I'm already planning. I one night's not gonna be enough. <laughs> <laughs> so I might have to go at, at least two, preferably three. Preferably I think I'm gonna stick to one because I'll get yelled at for doing more than two, probably. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. See what happens. You'll go one night. Then you're like, ah, oh, shit. This was We're just going the tomorrow. Warm up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good things ahead. Good things ahead. I like it. All right. Till next time, folks. Thank you for listening. We love you all. Like, comment, do all the things, please. It helps us. Please. What's up, Fitzy? Jail with the Fitzy.